so we're going to go ahead and go over um, how to make this Piper Cub. Now this is just one piece of foam that I got at the Dollar Tree. You know, it's a buck, of course. Um, it's 20 by 30 inches. If you can't find some of the stuff at the Dollar Tree, you could always just get a 20 by 30 inch uh, piece of Depron or um, other foam. Uh, foam board, I do like. The poster board is a little more rigid and you don't have to reinforce it. So I'd recommend going this way. This is about 3 16ths thick if you're trying to find something. So 3 16ths to a quarter inch would be fine. Um, I'm going to show you, I don't really have any plans on a PDF file for this yet, uh, but I'll show you how to trace this out. It's pretty simple. Uh, for the main wing, you can see at the top there, it's just uh, five inches wide. I'll kind of use a ruler here for reference. Um, so I yeah, measured down five inches on both sides. Um, actually, you know what? I'm lying. It's six inches wide. You will make a mark on the edges at five and six inches on both sides, and that'll cover your aileron. You draw two lines across, and now you have the width of the wing at six and then at five for your aileron. Uh, for the wing profiles here uh, at the edge, what I did is just took a bowl. I took that little uh, you know, Pyrex bowl, flipped it over, and figured out a profile I liked and then traced it. I measured in those distances. This one was a little over a half. This was about an inch and a half. And made marks corresponding to that over here and lined up the bowl with them so I could get the same thing going. Um, as for the middle portion, you figure out the center of the wing, which is 15 inches, um, and then measure either way so that you have a width of three and a half inches. Um, and then cut that section out. That's going to be so the adherence can clear the body. Um, and then right below that line that you made at six inches, um, go down another two inches on either side and trace a line across. We're going to use that piece to make uh, the KF airfoil, which I'll explain a little later. Uh, something I forgot to mention is that you can see this piece of foam was bowed. And when I actually uh, picked one that was pretty bowed like this on purpose. Uh, I wanted to use, uh, use that for dihedral. So uh, try to make it so the top of your wing, you trace it on the on the dished side so that you can have a nice little dihedral going, make your plane a little more stable. Uh, for the main fuselage portion, uh, what you're going to do is um, you want to measure up 12 inches by 20 inches across, make a big rectangle, and then make tick marks at 3, 6, 9 so that you have four 3 inch sections across. Um, and those are going to fold up later into the fuselage. I'll show you kind of how that works. I'm going to go over each section, but if you can kind of look at the, the main piece here, you're going to have this being the left side of the plane folding up. That'll be the bottom. That'll be the right side of the plane folding up, and the last little piece will actually be what we use for the top that we cut out. We're going to cut that last piece out at the, for the top separate, um, and I'll show you what to do with that later. As far as the measurements over here for this left side, it's going to fold up. I wanted it to dish up a little further from the bottom than, um, than from the top. So I measured in a half inch this way and four inches that way. Um, actually, first I measured in four inches at the top and bottom of the box to your dashed line. That's going to be a fold line. But anyway, so we got the half inch by four. You'll trace a line. This is three quarter of an inch. Um, again, by four, trace a line. And this, uh, for the middle portion, that's going to be the bottom of the plane. That's just half and half on both. Now, uh, for the, the other part, it's going to be, this is the right side, so it'll be a mirror image of this left side. So now we've got the uh, three-quarter inch portion here, three-quarter inch by four in, half inch. And then the top's going to be the same as the middle, um, or as the bottom portion. So half inch in, you know, and then trace your lines and cut. Um, this little portion was just because this thing happened to be slightly wider than 20 inches, so this is just the, the little waist portion in between the KF airfoil and the... Uh, fuselage. As for the tail section, we'll go back over here to the left side of the plane that folds in. Um, I measured a half inch down and then this is going to be an inch wide so this portion ends up being an inch and a half. So if you kind of use your ruler, half inch here, inch and a half from that line, you'll have a nice one inch section for the tail. Trace those lines. Now this little portion, this is um, representing the thickness of this board because we're going to lay down this uh, tail portion on top of that. Um, so uh, this is 3 16 wide. If you're using Depron or something else, just measure the thickness of your material and measure that down by 2 inches this way. And you'll cut that little section out after you've gotten this cut out, the larger piece cut out. Um, we're going to do the same thing on the uh, other tail section, which will be a mirror image of this one, right? you got the uh, inch and a half on this portion now and the half inch. 
as far as the um, the base, the bottom of the plane, and the top, you're just going to do it. It's a nice even inch. And one inch, one inch, one inch. So it'll be the width of an inch, so you have a waste material of an inch on the other side. And um, what I did forget to mention um, is that this portion right here from your other dotted line is five inches long. So measure five inches. That'll may, um, be the base of the plane, you know, the blocky part. And then from there, out to these little marks we were talking about, make the traced line to cut off. So that's that little portion. Moving on to the uh, tail. Um, the main base piece of the tail is, uh, again, it's the same width of the, as the fuselage. So you can actually continue this fuselage line on all the way to the end, three inches. Uh, wide this way and then 10 inches this direction. Um, your aileron is going to be at an inch, so inch wide, trace a line. Um, these little corner pieces that I cut off, all I did is I uh, measured a half inch down, two inches in, cut those corners off. Now I found the center of this, you know, five inches because it's 10 inches wide. And then this is a little hard to see, but on either side of that, this, um, let me see if, where I stuck my ruler, um, but it's about, I think it's, uh, 9 sixteenths, just over a half inch. Let's see here. So if you notice that if I center it on the inch mark, those little marks, you can't see it very well on camera, but it's um, just over a half inch, so 9 sixteenths on either side. Um, and that's going to represent the width of this portion from the top, um, and so that we can center this rudder or this tailpiece so that it's not, you know, tilted this way or that way. We're going to do the same up here for at three quarters of an inch on either side of that center line mark. And those are just tick marks. You don't do anything with them as far as cutting. They're just put there so that you can have that as reference to center the thing later. Um, and, and three quarters, that's all it says, three quarters of an inch. These won't line up directly with the sides. I made them intentionally a little wider so you can just uh, see that better. Now for the rudder portion of the tail, it's uh, five inches tall, so measure up five inches. And then this is an inch and a quarter in. At an inch, you'll make the actual rudder portion, um, so, but at an inch and a quarter to the, the very end of that tip. And then down here, this is three inches in, so trace that line from three inches to the one and a quarter up here. Of course, make your aileron, or not aileron, your uh, uh, rudder. Now, um, again, this little dashed line is the, represents the thickness of this material again. So if you're using Depron, instead of 3 sixteenths, it might be a quarter inch or something. But at 3 sixteenths, you'll make a dashed line. You're not going to cut that portion off. That's going to go down in the recess that you're going to cut out for this. Um, and anyway, um, now over here, at the end of that 3 sixteenths mark, you're going to um, you're going to actually measure up one inch and 3 sixteenths up to here so that you basically end up with from this mark it's sort of like a perfect one inch square minus the material that is in inside the recess and that'll make for a nice 45 degree angle um, upshoot here so it's an inch and three sixteenths up there and then draw a line that's so your um, elevator will have room to move um, and that's uh, it for those of the tail portion this last little piece is just a three inch by three inch box and then a one inch by three inch box I'll show you what those are for later now, um, in the in the center of this, I think it measured in, you know, I, I went into the inch and a half center line mark, and then on either side went out a quarter inch. So centered, you have a half inch by seven eighths of an inch cut out, and that's going to be for your servo. Um, I'll show you how that works later again, but if you just cut that out. Um, if your servo happens to be a little bit bigger than that, you might want to take measurements, uh, see how wide and, uh, your servo is and all that jazz. Uh, but that's the basics. Those are all the pieces. I'll go ahead and cut those out. One thing I noticed I did forget to trace is that on the top piece, the piece for the top of the plane, I forgot to draw in the recess for this portion to go down into. Now this portion from here to here is two inches, so basically what I'm going to do after I cut this portion off is centered in here, I'm going to draw a two inch little square. Uh, that I'm going to cut out. And I'll show you that after I cut it out. Um, and that'll give a spot for the rudder to have a little reinforcement. Um, so, uh, you'll have to check out part two to see uh, the next portion of this. And thanks for watching.